Good morning. Myself, uh, Jay Fanton. I'm working as an astronaut professor in the department of EZE, SSM Institute of Engineering Technology. Today, we are going to discuss about uh, the latches and the registers under the VLSI design subject. Um, first, uh, we are going to discuss about the latches. These are the basic memory devices. Later, we will be discussing about the optimized circuit about the latches. After that, we will be discussing about the master slave uh, registers. Okay. Uh, as we all know that the latches that are made of uh, transmission gate are uh, robust and uh, it's, a, uh, e it's easy to implement. That's what uh, the first point highlights. Okay. Actually, the latches can be classified into two types. One is a positive and another one is a negative latch. Um, the positive and negative name is based on the clock signal value. If the latch is going to transfer the input data to the output data when the clock is one, then it is called as a positive latch. If it is transferring the input data to the output when the clock value is zero, then it is called as a negative latch. As you can see in the screen, um, I have kept it uh, parallelly not to have a better uh, understanding about the topics. Um, the positive latch is actually, as you can see in the screen, um, when you are applying a one in the clock, then whatever value we are applying at the D will be transferred to the output Q. But in positive latch, if you are applying a value zero, then whatever the value that's in the output, it will be fed back to the output itself. That's how it works. Okay. Next is a negative latch. If you take up the negative latch, when the clock value is going to be zero, then whatever the value that's been applied at the D, it can be one or zero, it will be transferred to the output Q. But if the clock value is going to be one, then whatever value is available at the Q, it will be fed back to the output again. The same value will be hold. Um, it means the feedback process means that it holds the value. Okay, uh, that's about the basic operation of a positive latch and negative latch. In the next, we are going to see about the in detailed structure of a positive latch, or internal structure of the positive latch and working of the positive latch. That's what we are going to discuss now. As you can see in the screen, the positive latch has uh, two transmission gates and three inverters. Two inverters are available at the one inverter is available at the input side and one inverter is available at the feedback and another inverter is available at the output side. Um, when the clock value is one, just consider when the clock value is one, then when the clock value is one, whatever value we are applying at the D, it will be transferred through the this inverter through this transmission gate, through this inverter to the output. Okay. As the clock value is one, the upper transmission gate will be in off condition as it is the clock, the, as you can see, as we all know that transmission gate has a PMOS at the top and NMOS at the bottom, as you can see in the screen itself, uh, if you are applying a value one in the clock, then the upper transmission gate will be in off condition and lower transmission gate will be on condition. So as the lower transmission gate is in on condition, whatever value is applied at the D, it gets inverted by the inverter, first inverter, then it will be transmitted to the second inverter and once again, it will be inverted and it will be passed to the queue. Okay. If the clock value is going to be zero, then the lower transmission gate, this transmission gate will be in off condition and this transmission gate goes to the on condition. As it is goes to the on top transmission gate goes to the on condition, whatever value available at the queue, it will be fed back through this inverter and passes through this transmission gate and goes to the output. That's why we are holding the value. That's why it's called as a hold mode. And if uh, the clock value is one, then it is called as a transparent mode. If the clock value is zero, then it is called as a hold mode. Okay. That major drawback of this circuit is as it has more number of uh, 
this one uh, transistors it consumes more amount of power that's a major problem another one is the, uh, that's a uh, the problem is being boosted by the presence of a clock as we all know that clock has a activity factor of 1 so the number of clocks that are being up, uh, that the number of transistors that are using the clock is 4 so the amount of power consumption gets increased in order to reduce the power consumption we are going to the next circuit the circuit it has lesser number of uh, transistors utilizing the clock as you can see here in the screen only two transistors are utilizing the clock so the power consumption has been reduced that's a highlight of the circuit optimized circuit what you are see seeing in the screen is an optimized circuit okay um here we have named the first transistor first nmos transistor as a m1 and another nmos transistor as a m2 if the when the clock value is equal to 1 then the m1 when the clock value is 1 then the m1 nmos goes to on condition and m2 nmos goes to off condition so i'll drop the path so as the m1 is in on condition whatever value is applied at the d it will be passed through this n mos to this inverter gets inverted and through this inverter it's again once again get inverted and it will be passed to the output that is qm positive output okay when and the negative output we can get the false negative output at the qm bar okay when the clock value is zero then your our m1 goes to off condition and m2 goes to on condition as we are applied the clock bar it's zero it gets as it is a clock bar it gets converted into one so your m1 goes to on, off condition and m2 goes to on condition as m2 is an on condition whatever value available at the qm it will be fed back through the m2 through this inverter and through the next inverter and it goes to the output as we have already mentioned this mode is called when clock is equal to zero that mode is called as a whole mode when clock is equal to one that mode is called as a transparent mode okay this is an optimized circuit the operation is the same for both the circuits but this circuit has a much lesser power consumption but this is a major advantage of uh, the power consumption the reduction of power consumption is a major advantage but it comes in hand with a drawback that's what i mentioned at the last point of this uh, slide as we all know that nmos is a bad one okay um, that is vdd minus vt is the amount of voltage that can be delivered at the output by an nmos okay this affects the total operation it we won't get a perfect one at the output as we are using nmos as a uh, clock powered transistors we won't get a perfect one at the output this is a major drawback of this circuit and there is a static power dissipation okay these are the two major drawbacks of this circuit next we can move on to the multiplexer based master slave registers as we can see we are using both the positive and negative latch in order to create the master slave edge triggered register the first master is being created by the negative latch and slave is being created by the positive latch as you can see this one is a negative latch and this one is a positive latch that's how it works okay when the same operation is the same when clock is equal to zero the master goes to on condition and master goes to on condition and your slave goes to off condition okay when clock is equal to one the master goes to off condition and slave goes to on condition this is a brief operation of this master slave edge triggered register as i have mentioned in the points itself okay uh, this is how we avoid the uh, problem of uh, problem that occurs in a jk flip flop mostly we'll be using this master slave edge triggered registers uh, either concept in a jk flip flop or in a sr flip flop but jk flip flop is a widely uh, widely used uh, flip flop so this concept is mostly used in a jk flip flop as you can see um, in jk flip flop when you are applying a 1 1 input for an uh, j and k the output gets the present state uh, next state gets trigger uh, altered or toggled output of the 
uh, fast output okay if we are not using a master slave then the that particular input one one input affects the toggles the output multiple times that's a problem that's why we are using a master slave it's triggered jk registers obviously okay this is a basic operation of a master slave uh, it's triggered register this is the internal circuit of a master slave it's triggered register okay in this as you can see in this we are using totally four transmission gates two t1 and t2 in the master section and t3 and t4 in the slave section and uh, we are using three inverters in the master section and three inverters in the slave section okay just consider we can consider the clock values now when clock is equal to zero then the t1 transmission gate goes to on condition and t2 transmission gate goes to off condition okay same way in the slave our t3 transmission gate goes to off condition and t4 transmission gate goes to on condition this is how your transmission gates will be in the this is the state of the transmission gates okay now when the clock is equal to zero as the t1 transmission gate is in on condition the whatever data we are applying at the d that will be transmitted through this i1 through this t1 to the through the i3 to the qm okay in the slave section as t3 is in off condition and t4 in, is in on condition whatever value available in the q that will be transmitted through this i5 t4 and i6 again to the q itself okay so the mask when clock is equal to zero our master will be in a transparent mode whatever that supplied at the d it will be transmitted to the qm when the slave will be in a hold mode it fed feedbacks the output like once again to the output itself okay when clock is equal to one then whatever value as as a points implied when clock is equal to one t1 will be in off condition and t2 transmission gate will be in on condition okay and same way in slave t3 will be in on condition and t4 will be in off condition okay so in master as the t2 is in on condition whatever value available at the qm that will be fed back to the qm through i2 t2 i3 reaches the qm okay as in slave as t3 is in on condition and t4 is in off condition whatever value available at the qm it will passes through pass through the i4 t3 i6 and finally reaches the q okay this is how uh, we use the master slave concept in a edge triggered register okay when clock is equal to zero the master is in active and the slave will be in off condition when clock is equal to one the master will be in off condition and slave will be in on condition okay that's how the total in the total clock cycle will be utilized in the during the operation of a master slave edge triggered register okay the major drawback of the circuit is same as what we have discussed in the latch the number of uh, transmission transistors that are utilizing the clock is totally eight so the power consumption will be a larger one so in order to reduce the power consumption we go for the optimized circuit that has the lesser number of uh, transistors okay this is the optimized circuit of a master slave register in this as you can see only two transmission gates that is four transistors are utilizing the clock okay when compared to the previous one previous one eight transistors utilized the clock in this optimized circuit only four clock uh, four transistors are utilizing the clock so the power consumption has been reduced okay that's the idea behind it but the ma uh, the major drawback of this uh, um, circuit is operation is the same as the previous one but the major drawback of the circuit is uh, we need to be careful when designing the i1 and i2 uh, inverters okay as a if the i2 transist uh, i2 inverter size is larger when compared to the i1 it will overwrite the operation during the transparent mode and hold mode okay so in order to be to be uh, we need to be uh, nominalize the size of a i1 i2 inverters then if you if you have a better uh, if you have normalized the size of a i2 and i1 trans inverters then 
the operation uh, will be better than the previous circuit. Okay, eight transistor master slave registers. That's all about the master slave edge trigger register. Before concluding, we can have a small summary of today's discussion. In today's discussion, we have discussed about two things. One is the latches, another one is the edge triggered registers. In latches, we have discussed about the positive latch and the negative latch. After that, we discussed about the internal circuit of a positive latch. As the circuit has more number of four number of transistors powered by the clock, it's a highly power consuming circuit. So we are going for an optimized circuit that has only two transistors triggered by the clock or powered by the clock. Later, we discussed about the master slave edge triggered register. The master slave edge triggered register has a negative latch as a master and positive latch as a slave. Okay. After that, we discussed about the internal circuit of a master slave edge triggered register as a in as a current master slave edge triggered uh, register has eight number of transistors triggered by the clock. It consumes more amount of power. In order to have a reduced in order to reduce the power consumption, we are going for the next optimized circuit that has a lesser number of transistors. Okay. The current optimized circuit has only four transistors or two transmission gates triggered by the clock. These are the things we have discussed in today's session.